up? It's Rich here with Stuttering Fine Football. These are the prime time games for week eight of the college football season. Ohio State and Indiana. Ohio State coming off a bye. They did whatever they wanted against Maryland, winning 66-17. CJ Stroud, 406 passing, five touchdowns. He's up there for the Heisman already as a true freshman. Travion Henderson ran for 102 and two touchdowns. Chris Olave, seven catches, 120, two touchdowns. Smith and Jigba, five catches, 103. It 598 yards of offense, defensively five sacks, and had an interception return for a touchdown. Indiana, they lost a close game to Michigan State, 20 to 15. Jack Tuttle, 188, two interceptions. They turn over three times. I don't think it's going to be close. Ohio State looks like a national title contender now. I think they got their whole team rolling and should go through that game. USC and Notre Dame. Uh, a big rivalry game between them. Both coming up by USC, though. Their last game, they got killed by Utah, 42-26. to Keaton Silvis did pass for 401, two touchdowns and a pick. Drake London had 16 catches for 162 yards and a touchdown. Kane Mao got 11 tackles and two tackles for a loss for him. Notre Dame, their last game was a come-from-behind win against Virginia Tech, 32-29. to Jack Cohn, 108 passing a touchdown. He got injured. Tyler Buckner came in. Was 6 of 14 for 113, one touchdown. He did throw two interceptions and ran for 67 yards and a touchdown. JD Bertrand, 10 tackles and a half tackle for loss. I think Notre Dame's way overrated, but USC, they had fired their coach a few weeks ago. They're kind of struggling this year. I still kind of want to go with USC. I think Notre Dame is not that good of a team. I'll go with Notre Dame just because USC has a lot of trouble, but I'm putting Notre Dame on big, big upset alert there. All right, South Carolina, Texas A&M. South Carolina came back late to beat Vanderbilt 21-20. Luke Doty, 242 passing, two touchdowns, two interceptions. He got hurt late. Zeb Nolan, their grad assistant, he came in, passed for 75 yards and the winning touchdown late. Jaheim Bell, six catches, 136 yards yards and a touchdown. Fortunately, their four turnovers did not hurt them in that game. If, do, if they do that against Texas A&M, they will get destroyed. They may anyway. Texas A&M had a nice game against Missouri, 35-14. to Zach Calzado, 148, two touchdowns and a pick, but this was about the running game for A&M. Isaiah Spiller ran for 168 yards and a touchdown. Devin A. Chain ran for 124 yards and two touchdowns in that one. I think South Carolina, they have a better defense than Missouri, but their offense won't be able to quite keep up with uh, A&M. And A&M, I still think, is overrated. I still think they should lose a couple more games. I don't think this is one of them, though. I'll put them on a slight upset alert, but I'm going to say A&M uh, wins. North Carolina State and Miami. NC State beat Boston College 33-7. Devin Leary, 251 and three touchdowns. Thayer Thomas, four catches, 122 and a touchdown. They had a fumble return for a touchdown and a safety in the game. Miami almost came back to beat North Carolina. They threw a uh, tip pick late at, at North Carolina's like 10-yard line. That was 45-42. Tyler Van Dyke, 264 passing and touchdown, but he did throw three interceptions. Ran for 36 yards at a team. Jalen Knighton had a great game, 92 rushing yards and a bunch of receiving yards and three total touchdowns. Defensively, they had four sacks and had a pick six in that game. Miami, they're better than their 2 and 4 record. If Van Dyke can stop turning over, I think they may be able to two upset a number 18 ranked NC State. I'll side with NC State, but I'm putting them on upset alert for sure. Georgia Tech and Virginia. Georgia Tech coming off a of bye. Their last game was a uh, 31-27 win against Duke. Jeff Sims, 297 passing, three touchdown passes, two interceptions, plus 55 rushing yards and a touchdown. Allende Ailey, 13 tackles, half a sack, half a tackle for loss. Kez Jackson, 12 tackles, two tackles for loss. Wanye Thomas, 11 tackles, one tackle for loss. Wesley Walker, 10 tackles, and Charlie Thomas had 10 tackles and a tackle for loss in that one. UVA, they destroyed Duke in this past game, 48 to nothing. Brennan Armstrong, 364 passing, two touchdowns, 34 rushing yards, and a touchdown. Don Tavian Wick, seven catches, 125, and a touchdown. They had 528 total yards, four, uh, four turnovers defensively. Nick Jackson, 11 tackles, a sack, and four tackles for loss in that game. I think this could be a shootout, but I think Jordan Tech, Jeff Sims, turns it over way too much. He throws too many interceptions and fumbles. Uh, like I said, could be a shootout, but I think he's going to turn over too much and Virginia will win. West Virginia and TCU. West Virginia coming off a bye. They got killed by Baylor two weeks ago, 45-20. to Jared Diggy, 237, passing a touchdown and a pick. TCU, they lost to Oklahoma, 52-31, to but 
were able to move it pretty well. They had 529 total yards. Max Dugan, 346 passing, four passing touchdowns, and he added 45 rushing. Quentin Johnson, seven catches, 185 receiving yards, and three receiving touchdowns. I think TCU should be able to beat West Virginia and might beat them pretty badly. Utah and Oregon State, big game in the Pac-12. Uh, Four and two, both four and two teams. Utah, they were able to come from behind and beat Arizona State 35 to 21. Cam rising, 247 passing, two touchdowns, two interceptions, plus 59 rushing yards and a touchdown. Defensively, defensively they had four sacks in the game. Oregon State, they're coming off a bye. They lost to uh, Washington State 31 to 24 their last game. Chance Olin wasn't very good passing. 11 to 25, 158, two interceptions. BJ Baylor ran for 145. Deshaun Fenwick ran for 127, two touchdowns. They ran for 309 in that game. Avery Roberts had 11 tackles defensively. I, I'm gonna go with Utah here. Oregon State's been very good this year. They have a good offense. Utah has one. Always has a really good uh, defense. Their offense is starting to get something going uh, in that one. I think they should be able to slow down Oregon State just a little bit. I'm not sure Oregon State can really stop what Utah has been doing. It's not They haven't been putting up you know mind-boggling numbers, but they've been really, really good uh, offensively. And I'm going to go with Utah in a close, close win there. All right, then the final game of the night, New Mexico State uh, going to Hawaii. New Mexico New Mexico State coming up a bye. They lost to Nevada 55-28. Jonah Johnson put up some good numbers, though. 425 passing, three touchdown passes, and one rushing. Defensively, they did have four sacks in that game. Hawaii, they lost to Nevada 34-17. Braden Shager, 205. He threw four interceptions in that game. Day Day Hunter had a great game, though. 174 rushing, two touchdowns. Corey Bethley, 13 tackles in a pass defense. Darius Moussa, 10 tackles, a sack, and a tackle for loss. And Quentin Frazier, 10 tackles, and a tackle for loss there. Um, New Mexico State has a pretty potent offense. If they can force Hawaii into some turnovers, Braden Shager, he threw four interceptions. They should Hawaii should not take New Mexico State lightly with that offense. That being said, I do think Hawaii should be able to escape uh, with a win there. So those are my picks for our prime time. Check out my other videos later. Peace.